Hi guys, um, it's evening and my goats are finally foraging after trying to persuade me to feed them a little early. Uh, usually when I do the waters, I usually do feed them, but I came out here earlier uh, just so I could wash the containers. I like washing them like every other day. I like scrubbing them down. I don't like any kind of algae or any type of bacteria to grow on it. Now some containers have been scratched up by the concrete of the last place we were at. On the bottom, it's tough to get those stains out, but I try. I try to scrub them. And then there's my compost pile. I kind of, I turned it today, and the chickens are kind of doing their thing around it, which makes me very happy. So all the waters, you, all the little water containers have clean water in them. Uh, this, these two ducks right here, the girl, she's my last Muscovy hen, lavender hen. I have a black and white one in her. I have too many drakes. Anyway, moving on. What I wanted to talk about with you guys is a uh, follow-up with whoever might have watched the Ephesians Bible study video. And it's mostly to pique your interest and, and encourage you to read your own Bible. Because I, I don't I'm not don't consider myself a preacher. I just consider myself a Christian who share likes to share the Bible and share scripture with those who might be interested in the same knowledge and same food we call it food is our bread our daily bread why because you we don't get fed unless we're reading god's word we can't be armored up unless we're reading god's word we don't know how to wield scripture in a way that benefits people and and their understanding of hope and salvation it's it can cut you it really can you guys see an example of it every day with Christians who are self-righteous and hypocrites and I mean we all can be those things all of us I catch myself all the time uh, making judgments I shouldn't be judging uh, making judgments on uh, I mean I don't condone sin that's one thing I do not do but the the thing I have to remember is that I have to focus on my own sins first and try to share the gospel with other people so that they can do the same focus on their own sins first because we have enough people claiming to be christians that uh want to attack and not to say that sin is right because it's not not to condone it or compromise with it because it's wrong it's wrong if it's against scripture it's wrong i don't care if you try to create your own jesus if you try to create your own jesus it's still not true you still go in there's still one way there's still one way of salvation. There's still one way to destruction. So there's only two paths. It's our choice what we want to do. If we want to lie to ourselves. We're just hurting ourselves at the end of the day. When we get judged, we have to stand alone. There's no one we can blame. There's no one we can uh, fault for our own choices in life. There's just not. It's, that's the absolute truth. And Ephesians is a great book because it... it uh, contends with the church with that set up originally based on the foundation of Jesus Christ and the gospel and it talks about how we know we're sealed by the Holy Spirit is because when we understand that Jesus has made a sacrifice of his life his own life to pay the high price of sin and when we realize that most of us will want to say hey Someone that does that for me, what is this about? Why did this have, have to happen? That was me. I had to do that. I had to find out why. And because I wasn't raised a Christian. And when you sacrifice your life for someone else, it's because you care deeply about that person or those people. That you're willing to sacrifice your life for them to have a life. Well, Jesus Christ did that. He did it for the whole world. And there is a battle going on. It's not a physical battle. It's always, always, always been a battle. A spiritual battle. Ever had a thought that you wonder where it came from? Ever fought with thoughts that you knew were wrong? And because you thought, well, this is just who I am. Because you were convinced of that. You acted on those thoughts, even though you knew it was wrong. How many of us have done that? All of us, at some point. 
no matter how small it may seem because we can always find someone else that has bigger sins than we do but how many times have we done that on a daily basis so Ephesians faces or addresses the church being divided based on Jews and Gentiles customs worldly understandings basically what did Jesus say he said uh, you cannot enter heaven basically I'm not quoting it I'm just paraphrasing it because the way I remember it you cannot enter heaven unless you're more righteous than a Pharisee yeah more righteous than the Pharisee go check that out it's not happening basically if you're self-righteous you're not going to heaven self-righteousness is only a part of it i mean ephesians goes into detail about from how children show up of their parents um how fathers should not provoke their children um servants to be obedient to them that are your masters that could include work that includes school that includes anybody or any place that anyone might be over you because at work whether we we want to acknowledge it or not we're indentured servants we truly are unless we have our own business and then really we should be serving other people the more leadership responsibilities that we have the more requirement it is of us to serve to serve others and it talks about don't serve with eye service as men pleasers but as servants of christ doing the will of god from the heart with goodwill doing service as to the lord not to men the armor of God is very important. In order to understand how important it is, you really need to read your Bibles. Social media is a huge problem in changing your perception, our perception, of anything it chooses. Edward Bernays, grandfather of propaganda. Another read you might want to take on just to understand the designers behind social media probably worship this man so i would definitely think about or think just don't do it actually don't give your children this stuff don't feed them poison let feed them with the knowledge of the lord and from there there will be discernment that is really above natural it's supernatural discernment your children will make better choices if they do stray there's always um, the promise of God saying that if you raise up a child in the way they should go when they get old they will not depart from it and I believe that promise children are so impressionable and we so freely give them up to the system starting from five years old even earlier in daycare you do understand that the curriculum is very important i mean a child you've heard a child's mind is like a sponge and not only that but you can witness yourself that anything that we you and i have learned as children we did not understand at first or thought it was maybe very clever that our parents would always tell us to do something opposite from how they actually spoke or acted um, maybe not everybody's parents were like that but for the majority most of us as human beings are that way and in, in Ephesians it talks about the unity of the church being of one mind and one spirit through Jesus and it's very important to teach our kids this um, that way it protects them we have to teach them how to put on the armor of God we have to teach them why it's important to wield scripture accurately and proficiently these things are not taught to children how are they going to protect themselves if this is a spiritual war as Ephesians six twelve says and everybody can only react to news how can we stand by and watch each child fall the only way to change everything that we see 
um, as far as around us is to share the gospel, to be a community oriented family in Christ is the only way we're going to be able to stand what's against what's coming. Otherwise, we will all be divided based on ideologies. We will all, the weapons of the enemy have been used. And people are willingly going into the blender for it. Losing their souls based on ideologies. It's truly not fair that we think our will is better than God's will when it comes to our children. Um, what we want for them oftentimes is out of selfish ways. It's of the flesh and we need to stop. These things that we do in the name of, well, it's the perception of the way the world says we need to operate, right? Well, anything that the world says that we need to do, we need to think the opposite of what God wants us to do. It's always going to be in contrast with what the world says. And we can be responsible parents by giving up our kids unto the Lord's will, not our will, because we are so limited in what we are able to think of. I mean, Isaiah 55, 8, 9, Lord says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As, as high as the stars are above the earth are my ways are from your ways and my thoughts from your thoughts. And it's, I might have gotten the order mixed up in that little verse, but it says a whole lot. So when we're talking about Ephesians, we're talking about the unity of the body. We are talking about how we are supposed to avoid conversation and not be a part of conversations that have something to do with the world that triggers our flesh into a motion of go of regressing we are new in christ we have something to look forward to everything that we had done in the past is wiped clean white as snow why should we then not continue forward with a pure heart. A pure heart looks out through scripture, based on scripture, for their families and everyone else. So vigilance in reading the word of God is something that we must understand can be taken away at any moment in time. And what would a Christian or a person calling themselves a Christian do when the Bible is no longer available? How are we supposed to represent the gospel when so many Christians don't even read the Bible? So many Christians are not practiced in wielding scripture properly. Everyone can bludgeon someone with words, but the gospel is graceful and merciful. Also, it's a mirror showing our own hearts. We're not here to, when we approach someone, we have to be careful. We have to be very careful to let God get the glory. He already told us vengeance is his. He already told us that basically we are supposed to share the gospel he does the rest he does the rest and how we share the gospel matters because that goes into will how you will scripture you know it's a double-edged weapon it cuts to the soul it divides the soul from the body so we need to be very careful with our words our actions our testimony how we represent the gospel is critical in this era of things so <clears throat> please be vigilant please I beg you be vigilant and also don't stop praying don't stop praying to the Lord 